Asus's ROG Strix X870E eGaming Wi-Fi, I'm not sure why there are two E's there, is a 2025 AMD board that promises an upper mid-range experience with a somewhat hefty price tag. The board retails for around $500 and in South Africa you'll find it for anywhere between 13,000 Rand and 15,000 Rand depending on whether it's on sale or not. Given that it is an ROG board, it is packed full of features and some fancy RGB lights, but if you're looking into this product, you probably already know this. The board also comes with all the modern day advancements on the market, including all the Q stuff that ASUS has, including Q release, Q code, Q latches, Q LED, Q antenna, Q flash, and more Q stuff than you know what to do with. Generally speaking, it is quite a stylish board, even if it doesn't really push any of ASUS's high-end dot matrix LED features and motherboard displays. But in the review, I'm going to test out the board, which has been pre-installed into a new fully built ASUS PC rig that I've built over the past few weeks. This ASUS PC rig includes some fancy components, such as an ROG Strix 1000W Platinum power supply, ROG Ryujin 3 Extreme water cooler, Asus Tough RX9070 XT PC GPU, a cool ROG graphics card holder, and it is all built into the ROG Strix Helios 2 case. The motherboard is kitted out with 32GB of Kingston DDR5 6000 MTS RAM and a 2TB Kingston SSD. And the CPU I installed in this board is the AMD Ryzen 9950X. I have done a full video on the building process and setup of this PC, so if you want to get a closer look at every component, be sure to check that out in a separate video. There I'll go over every component in quite some detail and show how I put it all together to create this PC that you can see in this video. However, for this content, I'm focusing just on the motherboard, its features, and some benchmarks of the thermal handling. Of course, I will also touch on the Ryujin 3 360 Extreme Cooler, as a cooler does play a big role in these sort of benchmarks. When you pick up the ROG Strix X870E eGaming Wi-Fi, ASUS has included some extras in the box. You'll find some SATA cables, some cable ties, extra M.2 rubbers, and extra Q-clips. There's also the Wi-Fi antenna and instruction manual. The board itself is the main attraction here, and of course, it is quite a busy one. Between all the capacitors, chips, ports, and heatsinks, there's a lot going on on this board. The ROG Strix X870E e Gaming Wi-Fi includes 5 M.2 slots and 4 SATA 6GB per second slots. Three of these are Gen 5 and two are Gen 4. There are two PCIe expansion slots too. One is a Gen 5 X16 slot, and the other is a X16 Gen 4 slot. Keep in mind that of these M.2 slots, you'll want to use the two close to the CPU first to avoid lane sharing with the GPU. So this is the slot with the Q slash and the slot under the strange razor blade looking metal thing. Headers on this board include one CPU fan header, one CPU OPT fan header, one all-in-one pump header, five case fan headers, three ARGB headers, a front panel audio header, a system panel header, a thermal sensor header, two USB 5 gigabytes per second headers, and three USB 2.0 headers. As for the back IO USBs, here you'll find two USB 4 Type-C 40GB per second ports, one USB Type-C 20GB per second port, eight USB Type-A 10GB per second port, and one USB Type-C 10GB per second port. So that's a total of 13 USB ports, which is pretty wild to see. Other ports on the IO include a Wi-Fi 7 antenna port, SPDIF port, mark in, line out, a 5 gig ethernet port, an HDMI port, and there's a clear CMOS button and a BIOS flash button. The board itself looks quite cool, it has a deep black coating across it and various Strix logos and text slaps across the heatsink. There's an ROG Strix razor blade looking shell on the top of one heatsink which actually looks quite nice. The pipe coming out of the side also gives it a sort of industrial vibe, but the rest of the board has a more steel brushed finish instead of more LED lights. The SSD heatsinks are especially impressive here, they are quite bulky. Only one of the heatsinks can be removed with the quick release button, while all the others require a screwdriver. You'll remove them with two screws each, revealing the lower M.2 slots and the slots near the VRM block. 
I think the overall design of the ROG Strix X870EE gaming Wi-Fi is quite nice. It does look great in any case, but I do think that the RGB does play it a bit safe here. While it is classed as a bit more of a budget board compared to Asus's more flashy ones on the market, it is still quite expensive so I just expected a bit more. But there's definitely enough Strix and ROG logos here to make sure that everybody knows which brand you bought. I like the little finishes that I found on the board while reviewing it. There's some rubber caps on the fan headers which you can leave on if you're not using that header to avoid maybe damaging the pins. The razor blade metal plate in the middle on the one heatsink is also really cool. I don't have anything really to complain about here, but you are paying a bit more for this board. So it makes sense that it is fully kitted out and I just feel like Asus kind of skimped a bit here. At least there is a Q code display which is often held back for boards that cost a bit more. As mentioned, I installed this board in an ROG Strix Helios 2 gaming case. That whole build has its own video, so if you want to catch up on that, be sure to check it out on the channel. For the benchmarks, I'm using an AMD Ryzen 9 9950X cooled by the Ryujin 3 360 Extreme Cooler. I installed 32GB of RAM here, but the board does support up to 256GB of DDR5 RAM with speeds of up to 8000 MTS. So if you're a millionaire and you can afford that, then this board will support that. Power delivery on this motherboard features 22 phases, 18 dedicated to the V-Core. It includes 1980 amps which can easily support overclocking any flagship CPU. But then of course you have to worry about the CPU thermals, not so much the motherboard itself. Getting into the BIOS on the ROG Strix XA70EE Gaming Wi-Fi, it looks pretty much the same as all past ROG boards. There's an easy and an advanced mode which is great for users afraid to fiddle with the stuff they don't know anything about. You can easily tune all the BIOS using the easy system tuning and the overview page is a fantastic way to see what you have running, installed and some fan settings that you have. With that being said, I did tweak a few settings in this BIOS to prepare for benchmarking this motherboard. Easy settings tuning let me quickly swap between preset overclocking options which is great for users who might not be that proficient in the art of overclocking. But in the advanced mode AI tweaker, you'll also find all the other boosts that you need. Keep in mind that most of these settings don't come enabled out of the box, so you might have to enable them yourself. Naturally, I enabled game turbo mode and precision boost overdrive. This will allow the CPU to reach higher thermal caps during stress tests, and of course, perform better across all gaming and productivity tasks. It naturally just lets the CPU use more power and reach higher thermal caps. I then ran some benchmarks, keep in mind that I also made sure that the performance mode was enabled across all Windows and Armory Crate tweaks. Fan Expert was also set to AR cooling, which was enabled through Armory Crate after I ran a stress test. During my test, the board held up quite well. I left the stress test running for about 15 minutes and the CPU package peaked at 78 degrees Celsius with the CPU reading 67 degrees Celsius itself. The motherboard VRM hit 55 degrees Celsius while the overall temperature was reading 34 degrees. The clock frequency settled at around 5444 MHz. Power use on this board then hit 220 watts on the CPU. According to the test, there was no thermal throttling happening at all here. Other readings on the board which I took note of during my tests were RAM and SSD temperatures. During a RAM and benchmark test, the PCB RAM sensor peaked at 48.2 degrees Celsius and the SSD drive temperature peaked at 42 degrees Celsius. With that being said, I don't have many complaints about the ROG Strix X870EE gaming Wi-Fi motherboard performance. I think Asus did a great job on this board and it packs some fantastic cooling and efficiency at the same time. It has some great headroom for overclocking too. Granted, the board does still get warm, but it generally handles its cooling well enough that I never ran into any thermal issues. Keep in mind that I didn't overclock anything outside of the user-friendly options, so I can't speak for any tweaks that could void your warranty and cause damage to the board. But for any average user who is looking for a good motherboard, this is a great product and it won't be held back by your basic daily use. But like I said, I do have to complain a bit about the price tag because it is an expensive board and in all honesty, it does pretty much everything you'll find on competitor models, which are often better priced too. So this board's ASUS tax is just a little bit too high for my liking. 
But as I mentioned, this is a solid board. The AMD Ryzen 9950X is a fantastic CPU, but you probably already know that. Asus's Ryujin Cooler 3 also does a great job keeping the CPU cool, even if this cooler does feel a bit dated compared to some of the better and newer 3D display coolers that Asus has on the market at the moment. I've seen so many fake 3D display coolers that Asus has, and I've yet to review any of them, so hopefully the next PC I build, I'll be able to slap one of those into the PC build. Be sure to check out the other video I have on the channel on the full PC build if you're interested in checking out the other components used on this PC. So those are my thoughts on the ROG Strix X870EE -E Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Are you looking to pick it up or have any questions? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks to Asus for sending this to me. I spent a few weeks playing around and I had a great time. While you're here, be sure to check out my other videos on the channel and like and subscribe for future content like this. Until next time, farewell.